This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up? Real MVPs, Ricky Whitmer here, along with not the Mark Webber. We do not get to dub these E's or dub those E's this week, but I am joined with a familiar face, Brandon Swanson. Well, I should say the one, the only, Brandon Swanson Swanson. And Ricky, I believe it's dub them E's. Dub them E's, dub those E's, dub all the E's, but we're not doing that today because Mark is not here. Mark decided on draft week to enjoy the beautiful state of, as you would call it, Brandon, Tejas. Oh, Tejas. in Austin, yes. Texas. Um, as we speak right now with his beautiful wife as they uh, explore the world of Austin, Texas, which uh, I hear great things about Brandon, but I've never been myself. A good friend of ours has uh, talked many a time about uh, just picking up, going over to his cousin's mm-hmm. house, saying, hey, we're going, we're, we're going to Texas and we're not looking back, Austin mm-hmm. specifically. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I I've, I've heard great things as well. He sent us the picture of a uh, very twisted humor, by the way. Um, he sent me a snap of the pool from like the um, high ri- like the, uh, the hotel he was in because he was way up. And he's like, what do you think would happen if I just jumped? Or should I jump? And I was like, please don't jump, Tom. We don't need you to jump. Um, But that's kind of the humor um, that he has. But we got a jam-packed show because guess what, Brandon? Happy draft week. We made it. Happy draft week. Can you believe it? draft week. It's actually two days as we're recording this on Tuesday away from the draft. Almost exactly 48 hours from the draft as I'm sitting here looking at the clock at 6.15 Central Time on a Tuesday, but we got a jam-packed show for you guys. It's going to be all draft in this podcast. You'll be noticing that all these segments are coming out on Wednesday to get you guys ready for the draft. Make sure to also hit us up on Twitter in the comment section if you guys want to join the conversation. We're going to be talking Raiders because, surprise, John Gruden and Mike Mayock have a special announcement for us, which is something we didn't expect to happen. Um, Then we're going to talk about the Redskins maybe trading up for a quarterback, maybe not trading up for a quarterback. The Broncos, because they've decided they don't need a quarterback because they got Joe Flacco. Um, Then we're going to look at the Frank Clark deal that happened between the Seahawks and the Chiefs and then round everything out with some trades. What trades are we going to see? What teams are we going to trade or uh, are going to see trade on day one of the draft? Before we get into everything, though, Make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valid podcast. We are in a, Brandon, I think we decided a 10 by 12 foot box, um, or as I like to call it, a glass case of emotion half the time, um, because it's tears, it's sweat, it's yelling at each other, anger, happiness. I think you um, must be talking all about the uh, fast break. Yeah, most of it comes (laughs) from the fast break, but I mean... It is a small space. We're trying to get a new one. Patreon.com backslash Most Val Podcast. Every single dollar there helps us get the new studio. Bronze member, silver membership, gold membership, some great tiers. You can check those out down below in the description. But, Brandon, let's move into our first topic. They don't want it. People are like, Ricky, get to the freaking point. It's draft week. We want to get into the draft discussion. We're going to start off with that risky team, or I should say the most interesting team thus far in all this draft news, the Oakland Raiders. Because on Monday, NFL Network's Ian Rappaport reported that the Raiders are looking at some sort of a surprise pick at number four that would necessitate absolute secrecy. This is a team that... Before this, sent all their scouts home before Easter, said, Happy Easter, don't come back next week. You're not welcomed. You will not be let into the building. Actually, before you go, give me your keys so you can't get back into the building. So it's just going to be John Gruden, Mike Mayock, and the select few guys that they absolutely need in that room. The thing I want to ask you, Brandon, is who is this surprise pick going to be? Who are the Raiders going to pick at number four Thursday night? You see, see, I think this is really interesting that the Raiders have gone about doing things this way. And again, other teams certainly have gone with surprise picks in the past that I don't think necessarily 
were on draft experts' radars, our radars, anything like that. Mm -hmm. But the way that the Raiders have handled this entire situation being also very, it seems to be very public about it, uh, where everyone seems to know that they did this with their staff, with their scouts, uh, and that there's only a select group of people in the room makes me think that it's going to be more than just, oh, they're going to you know go off the charts over here. They're going to go you know with, with this guy over here. It makes me think, uh, you know, Ricky, could they possibly be working on some sort of deal that puts them in the number one spot? I mean, could they be working on that? that type of deal with where they have the, yes, they have I these mean, plethora of picks in the first round. So they have some flexibility to be able to do something like that. The Cardinals today Could they said, do that. The Cardinals today said that they would absolutely have to be blown away for a trade at number one. They said that today, Tuesday. So, I mean, I know we're in the, I know we're in the smoke screen. Like this is where like the smoke screens get the largest. Cause nobody like, we're going to talk about a huge smoke screen when we get to the Redskins, in my opinion, but I look at this and I go, that was my first thought. Are they going to try to trade up for Kyler Murray? Because I feel like if I'm the Raiders, the only quarterback I am taking is Kyler Murray. And the only way I'm getting him is if I trade up to number one. And the reason that I say that why, you know, that they very possibly aren't talking about a pick at four, mm -hmm. they're talking about getting a pick at one, is because why all the secrecy? Why all the secrecy? Why all of this if they're just going to hold fast, hold steady at their pick at number four? Mm -hmm. There's only three picks in front of them. There's not going to be, I don't think, some some big shakeup in front of them that they're going to lose out on, you know, their the the best player that they want to have coming right there at at, at number four. Mm -hmm. So it, in my mind, really the only reason that they're being this way is because they are trying to work out a trade to be number one in this draft and take Kyler Murray because as much as they outwardly and in the public say that they are fine and well with Derek Carr, I don't believe that they are. I don't believe that John Gruden has found his guy with Derek Carr. I, I think he wants somebody who's uh, a little bit more versatile, who's a little bit more uh, fun to watch play on the football field mm -hmm. and who's a little younger than Derek Carr as well, and that would be Kyler Murray for sure. Yeah, and the thing that I'm looking at, so this is what where my thought process went. You're on the right track, but you're thinking about it all wrong in my sense. You're on the right track of quarterback. That's what I think. They're taking a quarterback at number four. But notice what I said. At number four. And the whole thing that I keep going back to is, so put let's put on our CSI hats a little bit. Let's, let's kind of investigate this a little bit. What were Mike Mayock and John Gruden very involved with this year that happened in Mobile, Alabama at the beginning of this year? What event usually takes place that they were very involved involved with because they were the coaches of one of these teams. Do you remember what event that was? I want to say like the Senior Bowl. Bingo, the Senior Bowl. They were the coach of the North team. So they got to see and work firsthand with those players. And if I look at the roster, because the, the two big quarterbacks from the Senior Bowl that everyone was talking about were Drew Locke and Daniel Jones. And if I look at the North team, who was their quarterback? Drew Locke. I think that the Oakland Raiders, let me see. Or actually, you know what? Screw it. Because Daniel Jones was on that team also. I think it's one of those two guys. I think it's one of those two guys. And I came into this room today thinking it was Drew Locke. Because the whole thing I'm thinking of is secrecy. You don't want somebody trading up for it. So you don't want the Redskins to trade up. You don't want the Broncos to trade up. And you really want to get Drew Locke at number four. And really what it is is if the Cardinals go Kyler Murray, I don't think the 49ers make a trade, but they have in years past been a team that's open to wheel and deal and get draft picks. That's what John Lynch has done. And then you have the Jets at three, who they made a trade last year to get their quarterback. 
they would actually not mind moving down because they would need some draft capital to maybe get a second rounder so they don't have to wait all the way until the third. So that's why, to me, I I see the secrecy. My thought process right now as we are in this room recording is, is it Drew Locke because they're afraid of any team trading up for him because it's him and Haskins that are arguably right there at number two? Or are they going to go with a bigger surprise in my mind, Daniel Jones, who the only team I have heard that might favor Daniel Jones is the New York Giants. What's your thought? Out of those two, obviously Jones would be the bigger surprise at four. But in your mind, which one do you think the Raiders would lean towards if it's quarterback at four, Drew Locke or Daniel Jones? If the Oakland Raiders were to take Daniel Jones, I I would say it's probably pretty safe for the entire uh, fan base to lose hope uh, in the Mm -hmm. organization because that would be a moronic pick at number four. Um, They could take him pretty much anywhere else they would want in the first round. Uh, Drew Locke would seem... In your scenario, Ricky, Drew Locke would seem much more the uh, solid pick, the pick that I think that a lot of fans would be able to get behind if they've ever seen Drew Locke play football Mm -hmm. in college. They should be pretty impressed by what he's done and the skills that he brings to the football field. But, you know, are we possibly looking at this all wrong? Are we looking completely at the wrong position for the Oakland Raiders? Again, you know, you you look, they, they, they do need a number of of uh, areas. Quarterback, I think, uh, certainly being one of those. Mm-hmm. Wide receiver, they're pretty good. I mean, they've got Antonio Brown, certainly. Uh, people are and thrilled Ty- with him. Tyrell Williams mm-hmm. is over there as well, but those are the only two. Yeah. And, and then certainly, certainly you need to replace Khalil Mack. Mm-hmm. That that was something that was very apparent for the Oakland Raiders all season long. And and Ricky, when it comes down to it, is the bigger thing going to be replacing Khalil Mack? Or is it going to be scoring points on the offensive side of the football and finding that that quarterback leader? And and not saying that Derek Carr cannot be a leader, uh, but just saying that these last couple of years haven't proved to be very kind to him Mm -hmm. uh, via injury and statistically, but are are we looking at this all wrong? And are they, are are they, I don't know, going to surprise us with, uh, with a linebacker. Are they going to surprise us with a, you know, a, 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 I don't. It's not a surprise, but Devin White. You know, you know somebody like that. It's it wouldn't they be, a, could. but it wouldn't be a surprise though. Mm-hmm. That's that's the whole thing. We're all talking surprise See, here for Oakland, and that's, and that's why, no surprise. Is it is it Tremaine Edmonds? Is it you know? There's. Yeah. I, I mean, is it anyone there? Because I guess I'm trying to think as much in the surprise, quote unquote, surprise category. Mm-hmm. Because why would Oakland go to this length of secrecy with their own organization? That's why I'm leaning towards quarterback. And the reason why I'm leaning towards quarterback is you trade up in the top 10. Like, look at last year. Yes, there were trades outside the top 10, but every single trade in the top 10 was to get a quarterback. You don't trade up in the top 10 unless you are going up to grab your guy that you think will be the future at quarterback. So that's my first thought, and that's what I'm really betting my money on, is that they have a quarterback that they like. If I'm going with the word surprise, I'm going with Daniel Jones. If I'm going with the smart option of who they've said they've liked and just the things like the little footprints, the tracks that they have left for us this draft season, I'd go with Drew Locke, which would also be a surprise because in every single mock, that I've ever seen, we've all just said, take a pass rusher. And that's, to me, the smart pick. It's either, whether it's a Nick Bosa, whether it's a Josh Allen, whether it's even a Montez Sweat, you take that pass rusher because, as I have read at nauseum because of all the mock drafts we've done, and I'm currently a little bit later than usual finishing my seventh-round mock draft, trying to put together the best picks for the Raiders every time their pick comes up and putting myself in Mike Mayock's shoes. As NFL.com says, and I'm reading this straight from the Raider profile, 
adding a whole lot of juice uh, to a pass rush that produced a league-low 13 sacks last season. No other team had fewer than 30, Brandon. 30. So you had you were last place in sacks by a hefty amount. Yeah. And a little sidetrack here before I go before I go off into my sidetrack. The second position I would think of the surprise is what you mentioned, wide receiver. Like I thought quarterback, but if it's not quarterback, the surprise is DK Metcalf. Because those are two positions we've never mocked to the Raiders at number four. But then I think, why would you go DK Metcalf? You've got Antonio Brown. You've got Terrell Williams. If anything, if you're going to add a wide receiver in the first round, add a Paris Campbell with one of those later picks, Cowboys or Bears, because he could be more of a speedy slot guy to your Williams and Brown on the outside. To me, I am leaning towards the surprise pick is Daniel Jones, though. And the reason why I say that is, before I do, my my aside that I was going to do. I'm all scatterbrained with this, by the way. So my aside is whatever pick they make, and I'm assuming it's Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones is the name they call at number four, dumbest pick of the whole draft. It's, and the bad. reason I will tell you why they're going to make it is you've got John Gruden and you've got Mike Mayock. What's the one thing these two guys have in common? They want to be the smartest guy in the room. There are two guys that, what's John Gruden know more than anybody, Brandon, with all his quarterback camps? He knows quarterbacks. He's a quarterback whisperer. Then you got Mike Mack, ooh, the scout. He brings the scouting insight. Although every single time I've heard him on NFL.com at the Combine or anything, I haven't really liked his take. I've always felt like he's been a guy that wants to be the smartest guy in the room, whether he's right or wrong. That's the two things they have in common. They want to be the smartest guy and think they are the smartest guy in the room. How do you do that? You send all your scouts home. That's how you become the smartest guy in the room. You send everyone else home. Um, It would be like if I said, hey, Brandon, you can leave this podcast right now. Then I'm the smartest guy in the room. Um, But a thing I think back to is this, and this is why I'm leaning. I'm talking myself into Daniel Jones being the pick because – There was, this was last week when we did the podcast. We talked about the Raiders during our mock draft. And John Gruden made a comment about Mike Mack where, like, he told Mike Mack, hey, don't mess it up. I took a lot of slings to get you three first-round picks. (laughs) And Mike Mack, in an interview with ESPN, said, said this. Here's the quote from the New York Post that they've got. You always have to go back to trusting who you are as an evaluator. I'm a son of a coach, and I know how coaches think. And coaches think need. And we're a coach-driven building. Our coaches are highly involved. That's good. I embrace that. The flip side is you can't reach. You've got to use some common sense. That's what I preach. And the thing is, right here, he continues to say, if there is a discount, a displacement between the two players, let's not reach for need because the the more you do that, the more you dilute your roster. And that's a conversation we have had a lot. The way I look at this thing from a how to do or how to or how do people perceive me perspective is a lot of people doubted that anybody could come out of the media and go and be the GM of any team. I know that. I get that. Two things from those quotes. Number one, they're not drafting need at number four. That's why any pass rusher is not going to be taken here. They're going quarterback. Because that's the one thing we have not put them at number four because they don't need it. They have Derek Carr. Number two, what I'm reading into Mike Mayock is exactly what I said before. He wants to be the smartest guy in the room. Here's my picket four. I'm going to prove you're wrong because you guys thought I couldn't be the GM of this team. That is what I'm reading from those comments. Now that we know, because it could be a smokescreen, know that they're going to make a surprise pick at four. And how bad is that, though? Real how, bad. How bad is that? Real bad. I mean, you. I mean, you spoke before we even came on, and then mm-hmm. when you did, um, 
when when we did come on, you know, talking about how the 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 Raiders. Everyone remembers what the Raiders did last year. Everyone remembers that they completely blew their pick last year. Mm-hmm. And if they do that again this year, and they try and get too cute, is how I'm going to say it, and try and get too crafty. Especially they're, at they're the top going, of the draft. They're going to hurt themselves. What the mm-hmm. Oakland Raiders need to do is they need to come full circle. And by coming for full circle, you need to identify your needs. What do you need? Mm-hmm. You have multiple draft picks. There's a reason you have multiple draft picks. You're bad. Mm-hmm. Let's go and try and improve. Let's not try and make a point to somebody and show somebody, well, you know, with my crafty mind that I used on TV, mm-hmm. I'm going to be able to do – that's not smart either. So there's there's just really for the Oakland Raiders, it's not hard. It's mm-hmm. pretty simple. When the first three picks are taken in front of you, you're going to be left with still a plethora of very, very good players to choose from. Mm-hmm. And for Oakland, I know that everyone says you know the best player on the team and the leader on the team is that quarterback. But for the Oakland Raiders, it really did seem, while yes, Derek Carr was was outstanding and, and, and he was good in his first couple of years there, um, Khalil Mack was was their leader. Yep. Khalil Mack was their energy guy. And they traded him away. And they traded him traded him away and every Brandon's like, I'm thankful I'm a Bears fan. And every Bears fan <laughs> says, Thank you, you idiots. Mm-hmm. Um, but we appreciate it. We're glad you were the idiots, not us, because the Bears usually are the idiots. Yeah. But um what they need to do is they need to go, they need to get that good defensive player and mm-hmm. and get that defense, bring life uh, to that defense again. And, but it just doesn't sound like Oakland's going to do that. Well, and that's why I think that it's either going to be Drew Locke or Daniel Jones. That's the pick at number four. Um, my only question is which one did they fall in love with more while they worked out with them at the Senior Bowl? Because that's a big thing. They actually got to coach them. They got to work with them a full week while other scouts, other coaching staff staffs just got to watch. They actually got to work with these guys, and that's why I kind of feel like it's either going to be one of those two guys at number four. Although out of those two, for Oakland Raider fans, if I had to pick out of two of them, I would lean towards Drew Locke as like a at least Drew Locke has some hope. Whereas Daniel Jones, it's like, I'll be honest, he's not in my first round. Like, and the whole thing with Daniel Jones is you either love him or you hate him. It's like Todd McShay said last week on ESPN, they had him and Todd on, and he goes, yeah, like with Daniel Jones, he goes, Mel Mel loves him, I don't. Like, it's just a matter of opinion. Mel's got him in the first round, I don't think he's a first round talent. So, I mean, with me, that would be the catastrophic thing, is if they went Daniel Jones at four, because then it's like, great. What do you do from here? Unless you're going to work on a Derek Carr trade. Yeah. Because I don't think you draft it. Although Daniel Jones would need to sit behind Carr, I don't want to know that situation with a pissed off Carr and Antonio Brown and a Daniel Jones all on that team. They would just give him hard knocks right away. Um, I uh, there was something that you said that I'm trying to. Go back to oh, was the Mike Mayock comments? No, uh, now I, I remember, and it just what something that you had said just sparked sparked something in my mind mm-hmm. that I was saying. What if the Oakland Raiders completely just screwed with this all and they went tight end? They could. T.J. Hawkinson is somebody that's been mocked in the top ten. Jared Cook is gone. Mm-hmm. They, I mean, they relied heavily on him. Again, I know that people and Oakland Raider fans out there may be saying, "You idiot! They're not going with that." But I'm just trying to think. Surprise! Why? Why? What position, why would, one, I'm still trying to figure mm-hmm. out why would the Raiders do this, what they're doing with their staff, with their scouts and everything like that. They send them home, don't come back till after the draft. Okay, mm-hmm. well, that's very interesting. Um, well, and like, but then, Rapp- but then, and like Ian Rappaport said, most of those scouts are not going to have jobs after this draft is over because there's going to be turnover in that draft room because of Mike Mayock. Yeah, so I think that... Um, I'm just trying to think big, big surprise. And again, tight end, it's a mm-hmm. position that they need. No, I... Is it their most important? No, but uh, not in my mind. Uh, but it's it's a need. It's somebody that they, they need to replace. It's a position they need to replace. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are some good tight ends out there and available from Iowa. 
Uh, so there could be. Uh, I'm just trying to throw out some pos- other possibilities I, there too. You know what? It's something I wasn't thinking of, but that would make more sense than D- DK Metcalf. Um, if that was the surprise. The other thing that I just wanted to throw out there that really, if I was a Raider fan, would not sit well with me. The last quote of that New York Post article I read. So Mike Mayock ends it with this. But at the end of the day, here's the deal. If we win, everything will be fine. And if we lose, I'll get fired. And I'm perfectly fine with that. If I'm a fan, it's like, oh, so you're not taking this seriously. Like, you don't care if you get fired because whatever, I'll go back to TV. That's what I read into that. And I think that this whole Oakland situation, it's not going to work out with Mike Mack and John Gruden. I'm very skeptic of it now. And I feel like this will be the second year, mark my words, Thursday on the live stream when Dave and I are here looking at the draft and that pick comes up, we're going to be dumbfounded. My jaw will hit the floor. And then later when we're done on the Onside Kick recap podcast, I am going to blast Mike Mack and John Gruden for their pick at number four. Beware for it now because it's coming. Ricky, do you remember... Uh, obviously John Gruden's contract is 10 years. He's only going to be in what year two or three of his 10 year contract. I think just what year year two two. Uh, Mike Mayock's contract certainly is not 10 years. Do you know what his contract is? Mike Mayock off the top of your head. I could look it up. I mean, it's not that hard. I certainly could too, but I just thought maybe you would (laughs) know off the top of your head. Mayock contract. Let's see. They hired general manager. Let's see. NFL.com. Mm. Let's see. This article says, whoop, as my tablet decided, no, you don't need to read that article. Um, Let's see. Do they have it in here of how many years? He'll be spending. Is his also a 10-year, too? I'll find it. You go on with your thought, and I'll find how long that contract is. Well, because the the, the reason that I asked that is because how long were they planning to pair uh, this group together? Uh, because with with Mike Mayock and with John Gruden. I, I wonder that because do they believe that this is going to – be a you know a match made in heaven that the two of these guys were really going to click and are really going to click that that's that's what i'm i'm interested in is you know who who obviously they bring in mayak they they believe he's going to be the the guy that's going to help to take this team to the next level after they got rid of reggie mckenzie uh that you know ended in a 4 and 12 record this past mm-hmm. year but I, I wonder, you know, Mayock has had no experience in an NFL front office. He, I, I don't know how well he's known John Gruden, but it just, it, it seems uh, very interesting to me. Everything that's now playing out in front of us that we're looking at, I, I just am, am, am curious, and especially with what you said about the quote that that uh, Mike Mayock had is basically didn't, like a, eh, didn't matter whatever. to him. Like whatever, if I get fired, I get fired. I could care less. And that's in year one, not even year one. Like he got hired what this off season? Like he didn't even get hired during the season. He got hired in the off season. And I'm not seeing anything about a Mike Mayock um, year count in these articles. All of them just reference John Gruden's um, ten years. So I'm going to assume. That they, I mean, and this is a bad thing to do. I'm going to assume they lined them up to where they're overlapping at the same time. So maybe I would say like a nine-year contract at the most, which seems kind of huge for a GM. Um, But I'm not seeing anything exactly on years. But if I had to give my final thought on this, I'm going to say that the Raiders are going to go quarterback at four, how it'll probably – how the draft will probably unveil with this surprise pick, and this is totally different than my mock because when my mock I pick for what I think they should do if I was the GM. Um, Kyler Murray will go one. Nick Bosa will go two. 
if the Jets pick at three, and we'll talk about them in a second, if they pick at three, they'll probably go Quinn and Williams because he'll be the best one. They'll either go Quinn and Williams or Josh Allen, and then the Raiders will pick their quarterback with the surprise pick. But it'll either be Drew Locke or Daniel Jones, but I'm going to say Daniel Jones because of the word surprise being in there for the number four. What's your final thought, and who's the guy you're going to lock in as the surprise pick for the Raiders? Uh, you know, for the Oakland Raiders, I, I'm really, I think that they're screwed. I, I think that they're trying to be, uh, it, it, it goes to my, my point of, I think they're trying to get too cute and I don't think that that is going to uh, go over all that well, uh, mm-hmm. with their fan base. I think that at, at their pick, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I'm almost talking I'm almost talking myself into into this one. I I I think that they're I think they're going to end up going with TJ Hawkinson, tight end. It could I, happen. I, I, I and I I know it sounds so crazy and it probably is, but we're talking surprises. Mm-hmm. You go Daniel Jones, that would be a huge surprise and I think and, a mistake. And I think also TJ Hawkinson mm-hmm. would be a really big surprise and, and a mistake at that point in the draft. And the thing I do want to throw out in case there's Raider fans that have been like, guys, you've been bashing this team the whole time. The thing I will say, although I would take pass rusher first, I would probably if Josh Allen's there, he would be my pick because he could almost be the he plays the same position that Khalil Mack was, that linebacker rusher on the edge. I'm not going to say he's going to be exactly like Khalil Mack. Um, But the thing I will Give the Raiders benefit of the doubt is maybe they could take a stab at four because of those picks that John Gruden got later in the draft. Because we have talked about this draft being a hefty defensive draft. So maybe they're thinking there'll be a pass rusher um, in the late 20s or early 20s where they sit with the Cowboys and Bears. Maybe they try to take one of those picks and Derek Carr to move up after they take a quarterback Anything is possible. They do have capital to work with. I just think they should take a pass rusher at number four. But this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below in that comment section. Who do you think the who do you think the surprise is gonna be? What do you think is going through Mayock and Gruden's head? What's your thought on the situation? And then who would you pick if you were in that war room and had to make the pick for the Raiders. But Raider fans, I want to hear from you guys especially. Let us know what you guys are thinking down below in that comment section. 